Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer, and today we are going to be um, examining MasterCard stock. Um, this one came in by request down in the comments section of one of my other videos. If you have a request, just drop it in the comments. I'll get it on the whiteboard behind me, and eventually I will make a video. Um, if it's a stock that's in the S and P 500, like Microsoft or Microsoft, like Ma Microsoft is in the S and P 500, like Mastercard is, um, I'll post a free YouTube video. And if it's a stock that's not in the S and P 500, I post those on Patreon and in the full Cyclical Investors Club service um, over on Seeking Alpha. If you join Patreon for five dollars a month, you can get a big discount to the full service uh, Cyclical Investors Club, and those links will be down in the description. As always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks, and I'm just sharing that with everybody. And I always like to start by reviewing any past coverage I've had of a stock. Um, I've written on my, oh, I'm gonna do this the entire video. I've written on MasterCard uh, twice, um, both once pre-pandemic, which was a sell rating uh, due to valuation, and then once right at the bottom of the March 2020 decline. So usually if you ever see me say, here's the price I'll start buying something, it's getting pretty close to like the price that I would would buy it. Um, and you'll see that that's a new, I call it neutral rating um, at that time. And, my, and MasterCard was getting very, very close. Um, if you read this article, uh, $176 was the price I was going to buy it. And let's pull up the fast graph. We ended up bottoming at 199.99 so it needed to fall just a little bit more to hit that buy price so i was never able to buy it down here there was a lot of them i did get a buy but there's always a few that come close and don't hit and mastercard was one of them so since then i haven't written on it but i do actively track it uh, the first thing i always check is the historical earnings cyclicality and they really haven't been that cyclical for mastercard it's really just been a steady growth even during the Great Recession, they grew. Um, of course, they were much, they were smaller then, and usually, new companies don't. Um, usually, they go public when things are going pretty well, and we did see earnings slow down a little bit. But I mean, compared to the sixty percent growth that they were getting, so it's not that it didn't affect them, but it, you didn't see any negative um, earnings growth. The stock did fall 60% during this time, which will come into play a little bit later on here when I start talking about recessions. So um, during COVID, we did get a decline at the very beginning of that recession. Um, and then it picked back up once things started to open up again, which is expected. So overall, this has basically been a secular growth business, much like Visa, except for we do have a little bit more data going back a couple more years. Um, public data that is uh, these guys have obviously been around longer than 2007 um, so that's the initial story and you can basically look at earnings look at what the trends are and extrapolate those out to try to give you a pretty good idea of what you might earn if you were owner of this business so right now the PE is 34 looking pretty rich um, but the earnings growth rate is very solid I think I have I'll, I'll pull this up in just a second um, this says 17, mine's more conservative because I control for buybacks. I also control for include these down years like we saw during COVID. Um, and so when I do that, I get an earnings growth rate of 14.26%. Pretty similar, very good earnings growth. Um, definitely in this market, there aren't too many businesses that are consistently earning mid-teens. Uh, like established business that are consistently growing earnings that much. So the way I like to think about this is you're buying a piece of this MasterCard business. You can expect it to grow about 14% of a year. What you want to know is what is the, um, they have just a tiny bit of debt that I take account for here. So it's not going to play a big factor. Um, so what you want to know is what the earnings yield is. The earnings yield is the, Instead of the P.E. ratio, it's the inversion of that. So it's the earnings over price, and that's going to be 3.3%. So the way I think about that is if I bought the business for $100, it would pay me back, and I own the business. I just own the whole business. 
it would pay me back $3.30 in earnings each year. And that $3.30 would grow at about 14% per year. And what I wanna know is how much money I could collect as a business owner over the course of 10 years um, if we just grew that out. And so it's the $3.30 that's growing, not the $103 that you see here. I also pull forward the first year's growth. So we run that out. And if we start with $100, we would end with almost $174 after 10 years. And what I do is I convert that into a Kager percentage, which is 5.69%. Now, one thing I will point out here is that I pulled forward 2024's earnings expectations. So this year, they're, when they report, usually these guys report within the next month, um, 2023's final quarter, they're expected to be $12.16 a share. Um, I'm going ahead and looking forward and pulling forward that extra year's growth, which is expected to be 17%. So I'm starting with a, that earnings yield was based on $14.25 per share of earnings. Um, and so that's would give them a lower PE ratio than the one that you see today of 34 um, and make it a little bit more attractive. So I was pretty generous. Um, and now if there's a recession, if there's anything else that disturbs this kind of growth, then um, the stock wouldn't perform as well or the earnings wouldn't perform as well relative to what you're paying for them. But since I'm generally pretty conservative anyway, um, and we are into January, I go ahead and start looking forward sometimes with a stock like this to try to be more generous. Um, so I pull that first year all the way forward, a full 12 months now. And so I assume that they are gonna make $14.25 this year, and, it, and then it's gonna grow after that for 14% for a year. So pretty generous um, assumptions. And that gives us the 5.69% Kager. Honestly, that's about where the market is. Um, if I were to pull the whole market's earnings forward, um, when you consider cash is still earning about 5%, uh, that's not super attractive, but usually that 5% level is my kind of sell threshold. So I wouldn't have a sell on this. This would still be um, a neutral rating, a hold rating if I owned it. Um, it looks less attractive than Visa right now a little bit. So that might be something to consider. If I had to pick between the two, I would pick Visa today just because the valuation's better um, as far as I can tell. And in terms of when to buy it, it depends on whether we expect a recession or not or you want to be prepared for a recession or not. If you want to aim for the low recession price, based on, since I actually do have recession data and I can see how the market treated this stock during um, the, the Great Recession where it fell, it fell 60% during that time, the stock price did. Um, I can also go back and see, which is, by the way, that's what I used to base that buy price of uh, 176 during 2020 on and almost got there. I think if the Fed wouldn't have come, if the Fed would have waited two more days, I probably would have been able to buy the stock um, in March, 2020, um, but it fell, let's see, it fell like 40% off its peak in that month. So a uh, significant de decline. And that makes me think it could easily fall 60% during a real recession. So, and that means that my recession buy price is gonna be a little bit lower than what it might otherwise be. So right now, I think that that's almost 50% lower from where we are now. Um, I have it at $216.13. If you're aiming for like a recession price, if you're not aiming for a recession price, or maybe you just wanna buy a little bit on the way down and then you're just willing to hold through any further downside or maybe add a second position, um, just straight up long-term buy price with a margin of safety still is about $270 a share. That's about 36% lower than where it trades now. Very similar in line to Visa's buy price. 
from where it is trading relative to where it is now. So yeah, like that 35%-ish decline from where we are today would be, that would be the margin of safety basically. I would say probably the stock would need to lose about 10 or 12% to get to kind of midpoint of fair value. And then the other 20% drop would be the margin of safety is one way to think about it. And then if you're really bargain hunting and you know we're in a recession and you probably get a shot at that lower price, maybe. Um, the odds are lower that you get it, but the rewards are much bigger if you can actually buy some that low. So that's how I would think about it. Um, I do think these guys have a moat. I wouldn't worry too much over the next five years of competition doing too much, um, too much damage to them. And that's basically where I stand on MasterCard. Um, if you have any more requests, drop them down in the comments section and I'll make videos. I'll get it on my list here and uh, eventually I will get a video up for you. Thanks.